Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the front and rear brakes on my 1995 Mercedes S320. This should apply to all W140 models, although your part numbers may be different for the rotors and the pads. Um, I'm going to be replacing the front rotors with Brembo rotors and the rear rotors with Paget rotors, just because Brembo's are no longer stocked in the U.S., at least at the time of this video. And I'm going to be replacing the pads with Akebono Euro pads, both front and rear. These also come with the sensors. I don't recall if this car has the sensors or not, but they're included with these pads in case you need them. And the reason for switching to these pads is because the OEM ones create a ton of dust. And I want to cut, out, cut down on that as much as possible. So I'm going to step on over to the car, pull the wheels off, and start with the front rotors and the front pads and show you how to replace those. Okay, so as you can see, I have the wheel off of the car now. I've actually done the brake job on the other side, the pads and the rotor, and it was pretty straightforward. So I'm going to walk you through what you need to do in order to do it on this side. So the first thing that you need to do is remove the pads and get the caliper off. Now, for me, I start with removing the pads. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is take a pin punch pop out these two pins from this side, so you're hammering from this side and they'll pop out the back. And whenever you pop the first one out, this clip's going to spring out a little bit. And when you ever pop the second one out, it's either going to sit there in position or it's going to fall out. Now, before you pull the pads out, what you need to do is unplug the pad sensor. This right here is the pad wear sensor plug. So all you need to do is unplug that and you're ready to take the pads out. The pads just pull out like that. From there, you're ready to pull off the caliper, which takes two 19 millimeter bolts in the back and a decent sized breaker bar. And once you've gotten those off, you're ready to tie up the caliper. Now for me, I took the caliper on the other side, looped a bungee cord through it, and tied it up here on the coil spring. Um, you can do something similar to that, or depending on what tools you might have, you might be using an S hook, you might be using a uh, bungee cord tied up somewhere else. But no matter what, you need to tie up the caliper out of your way. And then from there, what you need to do is take an Allen socket, and I don't remember what size that is, and I will check on that for you, because I'm going to, step by step, as I tear things apart on this side, show you what it looks like at those stages as well. Take an Allen socket, and take out the brake rotor holding screw, and then from there, you can take a rubber mallet or a hammer or whatever, assuming that you don't care about these rotors anymore, and give them a good couple wax, and the rotor should pop loose, and you can pull it off of the hub. And from there, reinstallation is exactly the reverse of pulling everything apart. So what I'm going to do is set up the camera. I'm going to get started pulling the pads out, and I'm going to show you what it looks like pulling the pads out, and we'll kind of walk you through the whole process of pulling everything apart. Okay, so as you can see, we have the top pin out, and I also took the clip out, because once you take one pin out, you can just rotate it out of the way. The bottom pin I have knocked loose. You can see you just pull the pins out the back side of the caliper. And from there, you pull the brake linings out. However, they might not want to come out easily at first, so you may need to take a screwdriver and pry between them and the rotor to push the pistons back into place a little bit. And this one should be ready to slide out, which it is. So you can see that pad came out. I'm going to repeat that on the other side right here to pull this pad out. And that's how you pull the pads out. So from here is whenever you take the caliper off, and once I've pulled the caliper off, I'll show you what to do, or what I did, in order to tie it up to the spring. So as you can see, we have the caliper off now. It's tied up to the spring. It's a bit of a, of a precarious situation, but it's really the best and easiest way to do it. Now I'm ready to take the brake rotor off. Now I've already knocked it loose. I took the screw out earlier, just so I could do this on video. But what you need to do to take the brake rotor out is use a hex socket like this, and I did promise the size earlier, and it is a 5 millimeter hex socket. So you're going to use a hex socket like that, pull out the screw, and then use a mallet, something like this, to knock the rotor loose. And now you've got the rotor off. So installation of the new components is exactly the reverse of what I just did. The one thing that I do want to note is that you're going to reuse the shims that were behind the pads. You're going to want to clean these and then apply the grease that comes with your new pads to both sides of these as well as the backs of the pads. But that's it for the front, so we're going to move on to the back now. Okay, so as you can see, I have the new pads installed and this side is all buttoned up, just like the other side. Two things I wanted to mention. 
One is that uh, the torque for the caliper bolts, I didn't say it before, but it's 115 Newton meters. And the other thing is having to do with compressing the caliper pistons. So once you've pulled the old pads out, they are worn down, so the pistons are sticking in towards the pads further than will allow installation of a new thicker pad. So what you need to do is compress the pistons back into the caliper. If you've done brake jogs before, you know what I'm talking about. And a great tool for that is this right here. This is Lang Tools part number 279, and this is a brake caliper piston spreader. And basically what you do is stick it in there, and it ratchets and presses open the caliper's pistons. Makes that job really, really simple and a lot, lot easier and safer than using C-clamps or screwdrivers and wood or who knows what other janky methods there are out there. So now I'm going to move over to the back and I'm going to take care of that. You can see we're at the back here now. I did do the other side before doing this side, so I'm going to walk you through doing this side now. I will say that the rear brakes are definitely harder than the fronts. So a uh, couple things I wanted to mention just before we start talking about the process is that before you start taking apart the rear rotor, you're going to want to use AeroCroil and apply it at all of the lug holes as well as around this hub in order to penetrate between the hub and the brake rotor so you can knock the brake rotor off. Uh, if you just try using a mallet or a hammer and giving it a few good whacks, it probably won't come off, especially because there's a dowel pin here that's going to be preventing you from trying to prevent you from pulling it off um, with the corrosion that happens. Uh, also, you are not going to be able to use a brake pad spreader tool like what I showed earlier on these rear calipers. They are too narrow, so instead you're going to have to use something like a C-clamp, which is what I've used in the past on brake rotors, and I had to use it just now on these ones, and on brake calipers is what I meant. So in order to remove the pads, that's going to be your first step in removing the calipers and removing the rotors. You need to remove the pads. In order to do that, you need to pop out the pins right here and right here, just like on the front. And then from there, the clip comes out, similar to the front, and the pads will pull out. You may need to use a screwdriver to pry against the rotor to compress the pistons a little bit to get the pads out. Again, very similar to the front. And what I found most effective was instead of tying the caliper up, because as you can see, all the suspension components are kind of shoved into the car, into the middle of the car, uh, I just set it on the lip of a box. And I had this box underneath all four corners just to catch all the mess you can see that it makes quite a mess. So once you've gotten that caliper off and you've got it set on your box, all you need to do is again, take the same exact Allen uh, socket that you used to pull the screw out on the front rotors, same size on the rear, pull that screw out, give the rotor a few good whacks, and it'll come right off. So once I get the caliper off, I'm gonna show you what the setup looks like just so you have a little bit of a visualization of it, and I'll be right back with that. Okay, so as you can see, I have the new rotor on with the caliper reinstalled and the new pads in there. Installation is exactly the reverse of taking everything apart. Put the rotor on, you put the screw back in, you push the pistons back into the caliper, you put the caliper back on, you put the pads in, you put one of the pins through, you slide the clip into place, and then you put the other pin through. It's pretty simple overall. The bolts on the back that hold the caliper on are kind of a pain to get to. I had to use an offset box end wrench and then I used a ratcheting offset box end wrench just to make life easier getting the uh, getting the bolts on and off. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that before you push any of the caliper pistons back in, front or rear, you want to pull fluid out of the reservoir. I use that, I do that using a giant syringe, um, but if you don't do that and you push the pistons in, you will cause your reservoir to overflow and break fluid to use paint and the engine bay has paint in it. So as you can imagine, that is not a good combination. So that's definitely something that you wanna do whenever you're doing any brake job, not just the brake job on this car. So overall, it's a pretty simple brake job. It's just kind of a pain depending on when yours was last done. On this car, I don't know its history uh, as far as the brake services go. So a lot of these bolts were very, very tight, hadn't been taken off in a very long time. So is a little bit of a pain, but overall not too terrible of a job, definitely not complex at all. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.